Hey, and welcome to the House of Praise online service. We're so glad that you are here. We hope that this broadcast will be a meaningful connection to God for you. Do the best you can to remove any and all distractions around you. Hello? <laughs> so you can connect to God. One more thing, please do me a favor and fill out a digital connect card. It's very short and would only take about a minute. This way we know who is watching and it has a place for your prayer requests. It's the best way to stay connected here at the House of Praise. Now, if you're watching on the website, nopeerfectpeoplehere.com, there is a link at the top of the browser that says connect card. For Facebook and YouTube, there is a link embedded in the description. There is also a link for you to download today's sermon's notes and a link to give if you would like to do so. Please follow House of Praise on Facebook and subscribe on YouTube to never miss a service. Please follow House of Praise on Facebook. Thank you for filling out your connect card. I hope you enjoy the service. Good morning, House of Praise. Welcome to Church Online. So glad you could join us. Wherever you are, we're just going to have a great time in God's presence. Let's just sing together.
fall as deeper Have you ever considered that there are just some things that are better together? Peanut butter and jelly, hammer and nails, day and night. Although these things are good by themselves, together they are so much better. And our lives, well they're not all that different. We can live life alone, but it's better together, side by side, shoulder to shoulder, hand in hand. We are designed to live life together. My name is Colleen and I'm here to help you fill out your Connect card. If you're watching on the House of Praise website, noperfectpeoplehere.com, just go to the right hand corner and click Connect and the Connect card will pop up for you. If you are watching on the app, just go to the app's homepage, hit Connect, Connect Now, and the Connect card will pop up. If you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, head down to the description hit that link and that will bring you to a connect card while you're down there also don't forget to comment like and subscribe let us know who you're watching with and also while you're on that connect card at the top you'll notice a button for your sermon notes so that way you can follow along in today's sermon and thank you everyone who has been giving faithfully to their tithes and offerings online you're the what makes it possible to continue to win souls and make disciples. If you would like to give online, you can go to noperfectpeoplehere.com. Up at the top, hit the give button, or just type noperfectpeoplehere.com backslash give. It's a safe, secure, and easy way for you to give your tithes and offerings. You can also type in H-O-P-N-Y and text that to 77977, or just mail in a check to the House of Praise. Now for our very own Pastor Londine for an amazing sermon. Moving on to our next driver, Joanne, do you have a copy? It was a beautiful day. Now we are clear to go, go and raise your RPM to 1,200, knees off that clutch, we're clear to go. you guys are here today. Hold on, let me pull myself together. I am here to preach to you today on Father's Day. I'm sure that you are wondering why it's me and it's not Pastor Lon, but guess what? Pastor Lon got to preach Mother's Day, Barbie, 
<laughs> but I am going to preach today about the fast in the furious. I don't know why they decided for me to preach it. No, actually, I beg to preach it. I love the fast and the furious. I love speed. Any of you who knows me knows that about me. Listen, we've been preaching some really heavy topics lately with racial reconciliation. We've been preaching about um, the essential Jesus. And so this week I thought I would lighten it up a little bit and preach about lessons from the racetrack, which is, uh, you know, the fast and the furious. I don't know how many of you have seen the movie. I love the movie. I love speed. So let's pray today as we begin to start this new series and, and this Father's Day. Lord, I thank you for this time together. I pray, God, that you would touch our hearts, that you would change us by the preaching of your word. I pray that your anointing, your presence would come and fill each room, each house. Lord, as your word goes forth, I pray that you would be there, God, and I pray you'd speak truth to us today in Jesus' name. Amen. So listen, I know that a lot of times uh, life passes us by, it speeds by quickly, but the Bible says that our life is like a vapor. Man, it's gone quickly. And sometimes we get on this racetrack, and sometimes we, 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 we lose focus. And so I um, just recently, uh, actually I say recently, but probably a, a year or two ago, I was given a gift to go to Charlotte and to ride on a professional racetrack. Really, really awesome. It was so much fun. And, um, and so I, I, I was, as I was thinking about this series, I was thinking, what are some of the things that stood out to me as I was learning about racing in the car? And, and I want to take some of those things and bring them to you and teach you a few things, of, a few lessons that we could learn from the racetrack. And so the memory verse for this series is this. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 11 says this. Pursue righteousness and a godly life, along with faith, love, perseverance, and gentleness. Listen, there are things that we need to pursue. There are things that we need to go hard after. We need to put our foot to the put to the to the metal, our, our, the pedal to the metal, and we need to go hard after the things of God and go hard after these things. And so, listen. Um, when I was in the car, uh, before actually before I got in the car, there's a whole training that goes on. There's a whole bunch of things that they prepare you for and they get you ready for. And so um, as they do it, one of the first things that they talk about is, listen, it's very important to pay attention. And so, uh, you know, it, 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 he, they say this to you. It's important to stay in your lane. And, and they say it, you know, that's an expression that we hear nowadays. Stay in your lane, stay in your lane. And talking about, you know, what you're calling, what you're gifting, stay in your lane. But this is a little bit different. This stay in your lane is talking about, look at their sidelines. And they're saying, you need to not cross over those sidelines, but you need to stay in the middle of the road, stay far from them. Man, it was a little nerve wracking because they said, if you drive on this white line on the side of the road, you will, um, slide off the road, you will spin out and you will crash. That was enough for me to say, I'm going to pay attention. I'm going to pay careful attention to that sideline on the road. But listen, the Bible says the same thing to us. There are sidelines that God has set up for our lives to help us to stay in the middle of the road and to help us to not swerve off, spin off, end up in a crash and end up in a ditch. How many of you have had that happen in your lives before? Man, I really messed this up. I really did some things that I shouldn't have done. I got too close to the edge, and I end up crashing, and I end up in a mess, and then I need the Lord to help me out. Listen, stay in your lane so you don't, so you don't spin out. And, you know, I was reading a devotional that was talking a little bit about pay attention, and it was saying this. It was saying that... Um, Pay, it's almost like paying attention is a form of currency. It's like, you know, why is that expression, pay attention? Because you pay for something that is of value. You pay for something that's of importance. And, and Solomon, in the book of, of uh, Proverbs, is continually saying, listen to wisdom. Pay attention to wisdom. Pay attention, son. I have some things I want to teach you. And in Proverbs chapter 2, verse 2, it says this. Tune your ears to wisdom and concentrate 
and understanding. In other words, pay attention. He's saying, listen, I want you to pay attention to your investments. I want you to pay attention uh, when, you're, when you're deciding on things, when you're making decisions. I want you to pay attention to your money, pay attention to your family, pay attention to your relationships, pay attention to sin. He's constantly saying, pay attention because once you lose your attention, once you lose your focus, you start to slide over to that line. You get closer to the line, and before you know it, you're spinning out, and you're in an accident. Uh, if you read Psalm 119, I want to encourage you this week. Read this psalm. I, I love Psalm 119. It's the longest chapter in the whole Bible. But the whole chapter is start is talks about, Lord, I want to know your laws. I want to know your decrees. I want to understand your teachings. I want to know your regulations. Lord, help me to follow your things. The Bible is full of the Lord giving us instructions to help us to stay in those lines. And so it says this in Psalm 119, verse 30 and 32. Lord, I've determined to live by your regulations. I cling to your laws. I will pursue your commands for you expand my understanding. David's crying out, Lord, please help me to understand them. Help me to obey them. Help me to turn back to them constantly. David didn't live a, a perfect life, but he was saying, God, I want to understand your regulations. I want to follow your law. I want to stay in my lane, and I want to follow your paths. The whole song, psalm is talking about this. And, you know, I was thinking, I was thinking about um, uh, the, the people of Israel. You know, God helps the people of Israel and they cross over the Red Sea and they see miracles. They see God take them out of Egypt and set them free from slavery. And then they're over on the other side of the Red Sea and Moses takes off to go up the mountain to meet with the Lord. And while he's up on the mountain, the people are down below telling Aaron, where did Moses go? Who knows where he even went? And they decide to begin to worship idols. They begin to step outside of the boundaries and the lines and they begin to slide a slippery slope of, of worshiping other gods and, 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 and God from on top of the mountain says this to Moses Exodus 32 verse 7 and 8 says this the Lord tells Moses quick go down the mountain your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. I love that. I love how God says, your people, Moses, man, your people are not following instructions. Uh, that's, that's pretty funny to me. He says, how quickly they've turned away from the command, from those commandments I gave them to live. Listen, we need to pay attention. We need to put, invest our time in learning the laws and the commands of God. We need to invest our time in knowing what God wants us to do, following his path, following his road, staying in his lane. Because when you're in that lane, he causes you to succeed. He brings success. He will help you to finish the race strong without the crashes and without those things that would cause you to stumble and cause you to have to pull back and start over again. Pay attention. Listen, the other thing that I learned was this. Listen to the one who has a better view than you have. You know what I thought was really cool? From the moment I got in the car, they had my headset on. And the, there was somebody that was sitting much higher up than me who had a better view than I had that was telling me what I was going into. They were telling me what I was going to face. They were saying, here's the directions and instructions that we have for you to help you because we can see things that you can't see from your viewpoint. And I thought that was really cool because listen, it's the same thing with serving the Lord. The Lord has a different viewpoint than you have. He sees things better than you see. The Bible says this, he sees the past, he sees the present, he sees the future. He already understands all of this. And so there's a guy that's called the team spotter. And his job is to see your blind spots and to call them out for you and to let you know, hey, you got a blind spot. Somebody's coming up on you right here. Hey, there's somebody ahead of you. I'm going to give you the word when you can pass him and when it's okay to go by him. Or he's going to say, hey, there's a crash up ahead. I want you to be careful and I want you to get ready to go around him. The Bible, Jesus does the same thing in your life. He's telling you, listen, 
There's some things I want you to avoid. There are some things in your path. There's some curves that are coming, and I don't want them to cause an accident or a mess in your life. I, I want to give you a bird's eye view and let you know I see what's going on, and I understand it, and I'm not surprised by it. And I'm going to get you around that thing, and I'm going to help you if you'll keep your ears tuned in to what I'm saying and not try to do things your own way. Come on, that's good stuff, amen? That's pretty awesome. And so, listen, God is eternal. He sees everything. The Bible says this in Proverbs uh, verse 15, verse, f chapter 15, verse 3. The Lord is watching everywhere, keeping his eye on both the evil and the good. Man, God's got this. God is watching. He understands and he knows. You ever watch a movie and it's real suspenseful? The whole time you're watching the movie, you're at the edge of your seat and you don't know what's going to happen in this movie. And man, when it really breaks out and you see the real twists and the real plots, man, it shocks you and it, and it, and, and it stirs you. And you don't know how it's going to end until the end of the movie. But guess what? The next time you watch the movie and you invite somebody to watch it with you, you still kind of feel the suspense, but there's something in the back of your mind that knows it's all going to be okay because I already know how this ends. I already know who the culprit is. I already know who caused this thing. I already know how the ending is. I want to encourage you today that God already sees the end. So anything that you're going through, he knew it was coming. He sees you in the middle of it, and he knows how it's going to turn out. So we stress and we worry, and we're on the edge of our seats, and God's saying, I got this. I got a better view than you. I already know what's going to happen, and I'm going to bring you out. And if we can settle and rest and trust in that and trust in God, man, we're going to cause ourselves so much less stress putting our, our trust in the person who's speaking in our ear who has a better view. Listen to this Bible, listen to this Bible verse in Isaiah 55, verse 8 and 9. God says this, My thoughts, they're nothing like your thoughts. My ways are far beyond your ways, far beyond anything you could imagine. Just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. It's kind of like when I'm dealing with my children and they want to do something. And I'm like, no, 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 you don't want to do that. I already know how that turns out. And you're thinking it seems all great, but I can tell you how it's going to end up. You need to listen to me. Sometimes they go do their own thing and they fall and you pick them back up and say, I tried to help you. God does the same thing with us. He's like, look, I know and I see my ways and my thinking are so much higher because I have so much higher view than you do. Man, it's hard, but if we can get that into our spirit, that God sees things, he knows he's not shocked by it, he is going to work all things out together for our good because we love him because he loves us. Amen. Listen, the la another thing that I learned from this was uh, when you're driving in the car, they tell you that when you're, you're hitting that, that, that stretch and you're just cruising along, you come up on a curve and what, it's, what they tell you to do is accelerate around the curve, don't put your brakes on. You know, it's very natural as a driver to want to put your brakes on because we're used to, and I know for me riding my motorcycle, man, when I come up on a curve that says 35 miles an hour, man, I'm, I'm pulling back. I don't want to slide off the road. I don't want to be on the shoulder of the road in some gravel falling. I, I slow myself down around those curves. Now, obviously some people like a Peter Marr, who's much more experienced than me, will ride that curve all the way down and around. And he doesn't, because your wheels stick to the road as you go around the curve. And what they say is don't panic around that curve. Keep your gas pushed hard. Ride the curve. The road will hold you, and you'll make that curve in, in a strong way. And so uh, I, it made me think about the story of Nehemiah. You know, Nehemiah is in the Bible, and he's, uh, he's, he's working for the king, and he hears that Jerusalem is, is uh, the city is all broken, and the city, the walls are, are down in the city. 
And he goes to the king and he says, I want to go back and I want to rebuild these walls. I, 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 I want to, um, and so the king gives him favor and the king sends him with materials. So Nehemiah goes back and makes a decision to rebuild these walls. And as he's rebuilding the walls, um, he, he has enemies that come against him. And these enemies are, 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 are mocking. And these enemies are saying, who are you? Who do you think that you are to come build these walls? You're never going to be able to rebuild these walls. Anybody's going to be able to come along and knock these down. How many of you have had those people in your life that you're making progress and you're going forward, forward and you get people that say, oh, you're holy now. Now, now you're in church, so now you think you got everything all together. Oh, who do you think that you are? You're, you're, you're better than us? You, you're, you, you've never been anything. You're never going to be anything. And we have the enemy that's speaking in our ears that wants to stop our forward motion and the progress and the things that God's called us to in our life. And so Nehemiah ignores those voices, and they build the wall. And they get the wall halfway built, and the voices are still coming, and the enemy's still coming, no longer just to Nehemiah, but to all of the different people who are, who are listening to, this, uh, to, to the enemy. And the people begin to get a little bit weary, and they're like, maybe they're right. Maybe we're never going to finish this wall. Maybe we can't accomplish what we're supposed to accomplish. And so Nehemiah adjusts and makes some, has a new plan, and he says, listen, here's what we're going to do. We're going to build this wall. Half of you are going to build the wall. The other half of you are going to stand guard with your weapons. And then, and then he said, as a matter of fact, I want all of you. I want you to be working with one hand and with the other. I want you to have a weapon, a weapon in a hand, a weapon in your pocket. I want you to be ready. But we're going to continue to go forward, and we're not going to put on the brakes to what God's called us to do. Listen, so many times, so many of us, we get in forward motion, and then we put the brakes on. We're, we're, we're we're pastoring our children, we're trying to raise our children, and they get unruly, and they're doing some things they shouldn't be doing, and they're rebelling, and so we back off, and I want to tell you today, don't back off, and don't put the brakes on, keep bringing your children to church, keep preaching the word of the Lord to them, keep doing what you're doing, and keep moving forward, maybe you've lost a job, and so you pull back and say, I can't give right now, and you put a break on your giving, and I want to tell you, don't put a break on your giving, keep going forward, keep giving, keep being generous maybe maybe there's another area in your life that God has has that you're seeing the enemy come up against you and and you're trying to put the brakes on and you say I can't serve anymore pastor you don't understand what's going on in my life I want to say don't put the brakes on keep serving keep plowing don't go grow weary in well-doing but in due time you will sow if you keep going forward listen around those bends around those curves. Do not put the brakes on. Keep going forward. So listen, here's, here's the one last point. Make the changes that you're told to make. When I was driving on this track, all of a sudden he said, listen, Joanne, I want you to pull back. I want you to slow down a little bit. I want you to get a little more steady and then we're going to get your speed back up again. So I needed to listen to him. Another time he said, listen, you got a car over on the right side of you. You're okay. Go right on ahead and pass him. I needed to make some adjustments. I needed to listen to what he was saying because he wanted to help me to keep going and to keep, and to keep moving forward. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17 says this. All scripture is inspired by God. It's useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what's wrong in our lives. Listen, the word of God is there to instruct you. It's there to make some corrections. It's there to give direction. It's there to point out some things. I don't know about you, but there are times I'm reading the word and I'm like, oh, snap, he's speaking to me. Or I'm in church and I'm like, y'all can go home. This one's for me right here. And the word of the Lord speaks to you and speaks to your heart. But here's the problem. We hear, and then sometimes we leave and we do nothing about it. We need to hear the word of God. We need to make adjustments. We need to make changes. Because what happens is, if I kept going the way that I was going, I would end up in an accident. At one point, he said, Joanne, you're drifting, you're drifting, you're drifting. I want you to pull back. And, 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 and there are people that are speaking into your life today that are trying to help you uh, make some adjustments and make some changes and you're stubborn and you don't want to hear what the word of the Lord is saying to you he's trying to help you in so that so that you succeed in the end and that you don't so that you don't end up in a crash 
Make sense? Listen, I want to tell you that today. I really feel that on my heart as I was, I was putting this message together, that there are people today that the Lord has been dealing with. He's been pointing some things out. He's saying, I want to, I want to deal with this in your life. I, I need you to change this. I need you to get rid of this. I, I need you to make some adjustments. There's leadership that's spoken to you. There's, gr le there's group, group, connect group leaders that have spoken to you. There are parents and teachers that have spoken to you. And the word of the Lord has spoken to you. And yet you haven't changed. And I want to tell you today, the Lord is saying, hear the word of the Lord. Today is the day to decide, Lord, I'm going to obey. And I'm going to surrender. Because I've been trying to do it on my own, and I want to do it your way instead. And then there's others of you today, you've never made a decision to give Jesus the wheel of your life. You've never even invited him into the car. And you've never given him an opportunity to speak into your life and to change things and to, and, and, and to set you on the right path. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day that you can make a decision. Lord, I'm tired of doing it on my own. I surrender to you, and I want to do it your way. If that's you today, I want you to pray with me. We're going to say this prayer. It's not the prayer. It's your heart. It's praying it with your heart and asking God into your life. Pray this with me now. Dear Jesus, I haven't always done things your way. I acknowledge that I am a sinner, and I acknowledge my need for you. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. And so today, Lord, I confess my sins to you. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to make my heart clean, and I invite you into my life. I surrender to you, Jesus. Amen. If that's you today and you made that decision, I want you to take your Connect card. I want you to check on your Connect card. I made a decision today to make Jesus my Lord and my Savior. Such an awesome decision you made. We want to send you some information. We want to pray for you. Listen, we have a book that we want to send you that's called My Next Steps. Pastor Lon wrote this book. His heart and his, in his intention was that what do I do now? I, I made a decision. I want the Lord in my life, but now the TV turns off and I don't know what to do. We want to send you this book. This book will help you to know what are some of the next steps I should take. I need to get baptized. I need to serve. I, need to, I, I, I want to learn how to read my Bible. I want to learn how to pray. The book has some next steps for you to be able to take, and we would love to send that to you. I want to read an offering scripture with you. The Bible says this in... in um, in uh, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9, it says, Honor the Lord with your wealth and the first part of, every, of, your, of everything that you produce. Listen, he's talking about make it first. Go forward, go fast, don't put the brakes on on your giving. Lord, I commit to you that I'm going to put you first in my finances, and the Lord is going to bless you. Listen, there are three ways that you can give today. You can give online. You can, you can go to noperfectpeoplehere.com. You can click on the Give button. Very easy way for you to be able to give your tithe and offering there. You can also text HOP. NY, Hop New York, to 77877. And the last thing that you can do is you can mail it in to the House of Praise. That is it. That's all that I have for today. God bless you. Happy Father's Day. Thank you so much for joining us today. We love you, and God bless you. Again, thank you for attending the House of Praise online broadcast. We hope that you enjoyed the service. If you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please add it to your Connect card. That way we can pray for you and send you a free book to help you. If you need prayer, add it to your Connect card. And please send a link of this service to your friends. And come back next Sunday for another great service.